do you have to establish like a, a little bit before the listener knows like these are the notes that we're playing with and then before you take them to the next spot kind of thing great question well i would propose a question in return that i think would answer it for you which is when you're speaking you know english or any other languages you speak are you always wanting to make it clear to the person you're speaking to? Or sometimes do you want to be sarcastic or, you know, keep them guessing? So the cool thing is in music, it's up to you. So you might... Well, you said, do you always? You didn't have to finish that question. Right? Exactly. Like exactly. you already talked about, the way you said always, well, you already like... Exactly. You know exactly where you're, yeah. Where you nailed you're it. Going. Exactly. Yo, Skardor, how you doing, man? Doing well. I mean, kind of like just chilling after the stream. Man, man 12-hour stream. How do you do it? Um, Saturdays are a little bit long because you've got, got like standing engagements with like parties to do certain boss fights. So right. I'm just gonna like fill the time in between. You know, are you are you based? Are, where are you based? Because what time did you start in your time zone? I started at 1 p.m. my time. Wow, dang man. Well, dude, it's so nice to meet you. Thanks for coming here. Dude, I want, I mean, let's talk music. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about music. Like, I I feel like I kind of feel music, but that's about it. You mm, know? I like that. Is there a song you can think of that, that makes you feel something and, and what it makes you feel? Uh, well, I mean... There's always like associations with, with like situations where you heard the song or something or like other people you listen to the music with. That's fair. Yeah. Um, if it's about like the lyrics themselves, um, um, I think. Uh, oh God, what's it called? I think one more light. I think by, uh, by Linkin Park. Oh, it's a great song. That one, like I, <laughs> I cry. <laughs> yeah, it's a great song. Yeah, like. It's, uh, yeah, I just remind me of my dad a lot, honestly. I'm going to put that song on right now. Because here's the thing. Uh, lyrically, I love that song. If I remember the melody... It's so simple. Right. But if I remember the, the, the chords to the song, a lot of times, I mean, they, they've said this about uh, movies. They say, you know, 65% of the movie is, is the score, I think, or the sound design. And so yeah. I'm going to pull up that song right now, One More Light. They, they do that when they just take existing scenes and they put like silly uh, exactly. in the background and you lose all of the context. Exactly. So my, my guess is that One More Light not only has um, uh, beautiful lyrics, but there's probably something happening harmonically that's really intense. Let's listen to it, if you're okay with that. Yeah, sure. Just something that like hates the background. Oh, yeah. Right. To one chord? Like, str like stroboscopic almost, like raindrops or something. Love it. Yep. Kind of. So this this chord progression, which is, I mean, I'll, I'll say the terms, but we don't need to get caught up on it, is a six chord to a two chord in first inversion uh, to a one chord. So generally speaking in music, there's a certain type of cadence. It's called it's called the uh, perfect cadence. And the perfect uh, cadence is bum bum. It's like dun 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 dun. It's so re it's so like happy and stable. And this cadence is not that. This cadence is um, six four one. So point is, it's sort of like in a conversation. Already, I'm hearing and going. Oh, I can see why this song's very emotional. So if you were to go to someone and say, yeah, um, uh, how do I put this? If, if you were to go to someone and say. You open the door to their house and you go, honey, I'm home. She's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like really triumphant. Like, okay, cool. But what if instead of doing that, I walk in the house, I sneak in. And when I sneak in, I put my coat down and then my, my wife goes, oh, is that you, Zane? And I go, yeah, that's what's happening musically here. <laughs> we are arriving at the same connection. My wife and I are connecting. We are resolving, if you will, to that quote unquote one chord, but we are not coming from the traditional Hi, honey, I'm home. I come home and she goes, oh, I'm still seeing you on the one chord. I'm still seeing you, but you snuck in here. And that's what's happening harmonically. Not so that's hurt. that's very interesting that you feel this way in this song. I, I'm just throwing that out there. Now, my first question is... Did, it's pretty heavy, right? What was that? It, it's pretty heavy. It's heavy, exactly. That sort of cadence is very heavy. Yeah, 6-4... Minor chord? 
forward? Is that what that happened? Great question. So, uh, oh, that's a great question, dude. So the first chord is minor, the second chord is major, and the third chord is major. Um, right. But the, but what's interesting? Like it was completely in minor. It feels like that. Yeah. And that's part of the progression. It's almost like, you know, when you're doing a jigsaw puzzle and there's the blue parts of the sky and the green parts of the ground and, you know, by itself, the blue piece might not make you feel a certain way, but in the puzzle you go, oh, that's the sky. Mm -hmm. um, a, a major chord can sound really sad and a minor chord can sound really happy based on the context. Yeah, um, where it's going, right? Exactly. So it's almost like if I were to say... What if I said I love you to, to someone and it was our second date and we're at Disneyland? That's like a super happy I love you. What if, and I'm not trying to get too heavy, but what if my I love you was the last time I speak to my partner before they pass on and I'm 85 and you know that's a sad I love you. Same word. So a major triad, which can be a really connected, beautiful experience, when placed in a song like this, it feels really heavy. Super heavy. Um, Triad, so great. Yeah, so Triad is um is a uh, uh sorry I'm like this Yoshi's pretty good actually. A triad is three pitches um happening at the same time. So you know how like when a car horn goes by and it goes bang like one note you know or, or a better example would be the Roadrunner meep meep you know that's that's one pitch. Um, meep, but if I Exactly. So if you and I meet meet together and I did a different pitch, we'd have what's called right. an we'd have what's called an interval. And that's just a, a, a distance between two pitches. Two, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then anything three notes. Exactly. Yeah. And so the funny part is you can have an entire orchestra, eighty instruments, playing one note. Uh, and it wouldn't be called a triad because they're all playing the same pitch. But right. once there are three unique pitches being heard, it could be three people playing it, it could be twenty people playing it. But if the maximum amount of colors being used is only three, we call it a triad. Um, so does that automatically make it a chord if you play notes at the same time? Great question. So, so in technicality, a chord is four notes or more. So technically a triad, everyone calls triads, um, they call them chords. Like, oh, a C chord, a B chord. Technically it's a triad. And we've just colloquially decided to call them chords too. Yeah. yeah. Um, but... Uh, most of Western music is these triads. Like if I go, um, is this guitar music, which is pretty simple. Typically? Guitar music. <laughs> Wait, no, no. So surprisingly, guitar music can be really complex. The the hard thing about about harmony, in my experience, is how many notes am I playing at once? So if I play, hmm. this is two I meant Cs. More like popular, typical like pop oh, yeah. guitar music is like the same four chords. Like, exactly. Right. You can do a lot with that. Exactly. And the funny part is, it's all about the cadence. So, you know that, that trick that they, it sounds like you've heard about this when it goes, um, almost every pop song, you know, it's like, um, yeah, it's like stop. Day tonight. Yeah, exactly. Day tonight. Exactly. You're right. Yeah, dude. So here's, exactly, yeah. here's the cool thing about music. You nailed that. That actually is the language of music. You're totally correct. Um, you didn't know it was C, G, A minor, F, but you're, yeah. No, I don't know any of those. And well, you don't need to. Not because over here we do during with a solo so it's not even, right. I don't even know what an A is. Right. Same. So my girlfriend's from Romania and same thing. I said, you know, A minor. Uh, she goes, what? Like, you mean law? I said, yeah, sure. Law. <laughs> so. Wait, do you, uh, wait, wait, Romania. So you say Bună ziua? Yeah. How do you know that? I have a Romanian neighbor. I try to be able to speak a little bit of the language of all my people that live near. Man, that's awesome. If I'll... I am like fascinated with language, and that's why I'm fascinated with you because hmm. you speak music, you know. Dude, and that's I don't awesome. Know anyone who speaks music, so right. <laughs> Yeah. You know, there are there are a lot of people at colleges that speak this language a little bit, you know, theory and ear training. Mm -hmm. But I love someone like Jacob Collier. He really talks about the language in really um, analogous ways, if that's the right way of using that word. He always uses analogies. Um, I'm going to type in my chat, too, with, all right, about music. About music, then improvised musicals. Um but yeah, so this idea that I'm trying to develop for a proper show where we talk about stuff, my first question is, so far in this conversation, is it is it kind of like, ah, I don't know how I'm going to use this, or, and be, be harsh on me, is it kind of like, I don't know if people would like this, what we're talking about, or do you feel kind of interested in these things? So I'm, um, 
when I so yeah, when I hear like Destiny geek out about it, and I can understand like eighty percent of what he's talking about. Yeah. Like yesterday, he was talking uh, with a with a music dude, and they were just trying to figure stuff out because Destiny's working on a new uh, composition challenge. Hmm. So he was just like, but he's kind of stuck on it. He doesn't know where he wants to take it. So he was hmm. asking this this guy who's like a more like produced. I don't don't remember his name, but you can check his vod from yesterday. I guess. Yep. He was like playing on the piano, and they were just kind of going back and forth and just like freestyling off of his his improv piece. Hmm. And just like just to see like. He just gives the other guy six chords and the other guy plays the six chords and just takes it somewhere completely differently than he would. And just trying to understand why he takes it to a certain place and why he goes there. And even right after he does it, he already doesn't really know anymore why, what he did exactly. Because the second time he'll play mm. something that's just slightly different. Right. Um, and just like, yeah, it's just basically pe two people communicating in a language that I've never really so cool. heard. Because when you listen to the radio, like it's it's done. Right. 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 They've already had the conversation. Podcast, like, yeah, the conversation is over. Right. But when you see it live, it's so it's so different because it can go anywhere and it can change constantly. Yeah. You're speaking to that why it's so brilliant what you're saying too. You're speaking to why I love jazz music so much because the yeah, conversation is unfinished. Too. So great. Um, yeah. So I have, that makes me think of so many things. So because what you're interested in is also what I'm interested in. Um, so. People might not always know this. In fact, I would guess most people don't know this, but the pitches that we hear in Western music and even most Eastern music is just 12 notes. So the alphabet we get to choose from sonically is only 12 notes. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, the thing that Destiny's doing with his friend, you know, they're doing six chords. What ends up happening is it's just like on a on a palette on a when you're painting, if you have, you know, red, whatever, yellow, green, blue, whatever the colors are, mm -hmm. um, Oh, sorry. Well, I said six chords is like an example, but he had like a, a little piece, but it was definitely unfinished. It was maybe like like one verse and like a, the beginning of a chorus kind of thing, like that length. You know? Yes. So so when someone, you know, at least I can speak for myself, when I'm writing a song, often what's going through my head is either just pure intuition, which I would say is what you and I are doing right now. You know, you speak English, I speak English, and we're intuitively communicating. Um, but to get there, I did learn the basic building blocks. Um, of the 12 notes and how they interact. And then once I build the 12 notes, then I build out these tries that we just talked about and then the chords. So if Destiny were to play for me a few chords and say, where should this go? I would dip into, well, if you're playing a four chord and it's going to a six chord, I mean, might I suggest we do a two chord in between? And I'll play that for you after the, I beat this guy, if you want. Um, but what it's just four, six chord, two chord was all I mean. Great question. So basically, in uh, most Western music, we have seven note scales. So we only have twelve notes in music, only twelve, and then we take seven of them and we organize them. They're prepackaged. If I were to use an analogy, I would say, let's say you're on a, a main street, a main street in town, and on the street you have a, a gas station, you have a sports store. You know, it's all in the main street. If you were to go to the sports store and say, hey guys, do you have any gasoline? They'd say, uh, no. <laughs> for a sports store, we got we got sporting goods, you know? I'd say, oh, okay, right, well, I'm looking for gasoline. They go, oh, go to the gas store. And, and my point is there are different stores. So for example, uh, this store has pre-packaged seven notes of those 12. Um, let's, let's say this is the sports store. So I go to the sports store and say, Hey man, I'm playing a hockey game. What do I need? They say, well, you need the stick, you need the skates, you need the pads, you need the face mask, you need the helmet, you need a uh, tape for the hockey stick, you need a hockey puck, and then you need a, uh, a goalie net. And now you can play hockey. So all those, all those seven notes are, already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So all those seven notes are from the the sport. They're they're pre um, pre packaged to work well. So all these items uh, work with hockey. They're they're not saying, hey, here's a hockey stick and here's lemonade. It's like no, that would be here's hockey, here's lemonade. <laughs> they're like all these pair nicely. So when you have seven of those twelve notes you have at your disposal and you organize them, you get scales. That's my C major scale. Here's my A major scale. So I have these different scales, and in those scales, I can create triads using. Wait, so it's a different starting slash bass note, and it's a different set of seven of the twelve that create the scale. Perfect. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, and you can change the intervals. So I could do. 
That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Right? Or I could do one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, raise seven, one. That's called a harmonic. Destiny, talk about if something is like, I don't know, like a flat something or a sharp something else that depends on what your key is in or something. Exactly. Yeah. Different keys have prepackaged uh, amounts of sharps and flats. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so basically, once you have those, then you can dictate what kind of triads or chords happen inside of that scale. So if I'm right. in C major and I say, let's play the four chord, all I'm doing is starting on four and then I'm going up diatonically, which just means... I'm um I have the hockey stick, then I have the pads, then I have the helmet. You know, I'm not I'm not adding the, the goalie net. I don't have that note, I don't have the the tape, I just have stick, you know, pads, goalie net. So that's called the four chord. So all those notes, I didn't do this, I didn't do that, I didn't do I did all these three notes happen in this scale. Yeah, so, they're, so it's almost like if you were to have a meal and say, oh, I'm going to have my steak and my red wine and my Brussels sprouts, you know, very nicely paired. Those, those notes pair well together because they are the four, the six, and the one from the key of C. And when so you play... You to, do you have to establish like a, a little bit before the listener knows like these are the notes that we're playing with and then before you take them to the next spot kind of thing? Great question. Well, I would propose a question in return that I think would answer it for you, which is when you're speaking, you know, English or any other languages you speak, are you always wanting to make it clear to the person you're speaking to? Or sometimes do you want to be sarcastic or, you know, keep them guessing? So the cool thing is in music, it's up to you. So you might... Well, you said, do you always? You didn't have to finish that question. Right? Exactly. Like exactly. you already talked about, the way you said always, you already like... Exactly. You know exactly where you're, yeah. Where you nailed it. Always. Exactly. So, so basically, um, if you want to have someone analyze it in school, you do need to give them at least three chords so they can really know what's happening. Sometimes right. you can do it in two chords. Like 600 outs. Exactly. Like exactly. If I go like this, that's my, my, my favorite thing to do is a singer will go, um, I want to write a song with you. And they'll go, how are you doing? What key is that in? And I'm like, uh, Okay, you only gave me a few melody notes. You give me, how are you doing? And it could have happened over that chord, okay? How are you doing? But it also could happen over this chord. How are you doing? It could also happen over this chord. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? I remember this because I remember I used to do like um, little writing exercises with my mom. Um, like she wouldn't know what to do with us. And we were like hmm. outside in nice weather and she would just want to sit outside and do nothing. And we would be like, you know, horsing around little kids. Yes. So basically, we do this little writing exercise where we just took like a pencil and we took like a newspaper and a pencil. Hmm. And we just took like, you know, you just take like five snaps and you hmm. write those words down and then we try to write a little story with those words. Hmm. So it's basically kind of like you're, you know, and yet we're in, you're out in nature, right? Sort of kind of like inspired by ambient noise and that kind of stuff. I love it. And I remember having a conversation like, I, w I was in, like stuck on how to start. Hmm. So I was like, how do I, like, how should I start? And my mom's like, well, how can, how can stories start? And hmm. I, I remember just looking at her for like 10 straight seconds. <laughs> and it's like, however you want. <laughs> right. Like, exactly. Wow. And then I was like, I was, it was so liberating. I was like, like, I can start however the fuck I want. I guess, uh, oh, sorry. I don't know. No, it's great. Oh, you can totally curse in here. Yeah, it's all good. So I started, I remember I started with some kind of story about a fountain or something. And because hmm. it, it didn't really matter where you start, because once it. you start, then you can get an idea of where you want to go, and then you maybe change where you started. But I love it. At least the story is taking some form, right? Exactly. Right. And sometimes, you know, I've heard composers that give themselves constraints so that they can have that starting point come more effortlessly. So they might mm -hmm. say, "I'm I'm forcing myself. I'm going to write a song. All that I know is that I want it to be in." Uh, a harmonic minor and, and, and at the end of the day that out that also is a starting point <laughs> so i guess they are mm -hmm. starting it that way but um yeah. and then they find a melody inside of that so uh, i love that what your mom expressed though yeah how, how can a story start in any way um yeah. but yeah there is uh there totally is an underlying harmonic language and what's so cool is then you get a melody and then you get lyrics and this is why music i think is so powerful it combines so many like there's story in it there's poetry in it there's uh music you know musical organization um mm -hmm. so really when we're hearing music we're hearing three or four things at once you know a story and yeah. a musical story
and then other stuff too. But um, and weeks, some well, sometimes like a half an hour of work, and sometimes just years of struggling to right. get stuff, the pieces to fit. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh shoot, I, I hit it out of bounds. Um, now, do you have a creative outlet? Because uh, you were saying music is something newer to you, but do you write or film I things? Used to do a little bit of things. Well, I so I stream. So what I usually try to do is I try to like look for things that people are kind of the questions that people have like just in the game like in maple story but then i try to kind of relate that to things in real life and how very cool that can find its way you know in the fun kind of like it find its way out in in different situations hmm. and um to try to kind of find the analogies there where it's more about a co where we're more talking about a concept than just like oh you know i'm unhappy with this one thing right but more try to broaden it a little bit and i do also try to make videos not so much um i don't really do things that i would consider like creative like mm -hmm. however i present the things i mean there's definitely some creativity in there and making sure that i have the whole story and how i present everything i have control over that uh, over like my youtube videos right but there isn't um yeah, you know, I have like in the moment creativity where they're like wacky things or something, but I right. don't really have something where I like create whole pieces or stuff. Right, like an artistic outlet, like a painting or something. Yeah, I don't right. really have that. I have some stuff that I've made. Um, I have like a drawing that was pretty good that I made a long time ago. And I don't know, there's like, there, there's definitely something in there. Hmm. Um, and I did some writing when I was younger. I never got into drawing very much, but like. I did like a pastel something. I don't know. It was usually when when I was still at home and not doing much. Uh, my mom did stuff. She was like just trying to drag me along to just to get me to do anything, you know. Right. So I love it. 17, 18, 19. I didn't really do much during that time. Right. Uh, didn't really do college. Didn't you know? I was just like playing games with not really anything. So right. I needed to be kicked out of that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shaken up. Yeah, I relate to yeah, that yeah, actually. Yeah. I lived with my aunt and uncle for a while and kind of got some some more perspective um but yeah i, I do think about that sometime if that's some energy that i have that should be going towards hmm. that. it sounds like you're doing so much productive stuff too so whether or not i was there you're right that it's happening in the moment when you're creating this all the content you create which is a lot you know it's amazing yeah i am um i'm working with someone so i made this whole i don't know i can show you it's like really it's like the opposite of well you can maybe find music in it but it might be like the opposite of of music in a sense where it's like the most rigid and <laughs> structured mm. thing you may have ever seen love but it basically what i try to do is try to like um grade how good all the classes that you can play in the game are all <sighs> compared to each other depending on their situation i love it but, but i want to um and this is just like boring just numbers and i sent it to you on discord yep i'm looking um, right now and i'm but i am working with someone who is trying to make this into a more um fun approachable way that someone could be like hey i don't know what character to play and then they could just give in some parameters oh i love it and this will be used as a as a backdrop to be like well it seems like these characters fill like your desires and then hmm. hopefully they have a better chance because there's 47 classes to play which good lord know, it's like playing Mario. I don't know how many characters you can play in this, but like, how do you figure out which character you want to play, right? Right. So, uh, you try so there's tricky like ones. Them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's tricky. There's speedy. There's technical. Like five or six classes max. <laughs> exactly. And and the game has like kind of these these types as well, but they have like a a five star system over like three things, and it's kind of like oh, they're, they're all kind of like around average, and then some are a little bit below, and some are a little bit above. And then, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Very cool. Uh, so I try to be more, a little bit more in depth with all of that. Also, also right. The state, like how far are you going to take it? How serious are you? Or are you just, you know, passing by? Right. Um, have you also so done Dungeons and Dragons? I have not, but I used to play a few games that I think were based on it. I used to play, um, I played, I, got, I had a friend who kind of got me into Baldur's Gate 2 mm. when that came when that right. was out. Right. Um, didn't work very well. It was like, eight different cd roms that yet that he like burned <laughs> it's hmm. just like you know back in the day where well it's not, it wasn't dvds it was like cd roms you know it was like install cd6 for installation that kind of stuff right uh, and i played neverwinter nights which was a, i think a little bit closer adhering to um 
to D and D, but I don't know about like what rule set it was or how it worked. I remember that it was. I would probably enjoy it if it was a little bit less. Um, I don't know if the the term nerdy is a little bit too too uh-huh. broad, but like a little bit too. Um, um, yeah, there, there was a little bit too much management in all of the numbers. Right, right. Um, yeah. The auto assigning everything would be too boring as well, but like something a little bit in between, I guess. Have you ever played Octopath Traveler? It's an RPG that came out I, for Switch. I listen to the OST probably like three times a week or four times a Dude, week. Dude, it's so good. <laughs> I've never played it, but the OST I really enjoy. Yeah. For some reason, the music reminds me of a lot of other stuff without mm-hmm. copying anything. Dude, that that reminds me. We haven't done a music theory of gaming on Octopath Traveler. Why have we never done that? It's know. so good. Uh, I remember Ophelia having great music. Oh, so good. But yeah, what's so cool about music theory too is is that uh, I was talking to my girlfriend about this, how rhythm is something I'm very passionate about. It's something that shows up, especially in my improvisational playing, quite a bit. And yet I feel like harmony is kind of my... Um, my purpose in life, talking about harmony, how notes and pitches relate uh, when, when it comes to music theory. And uh, there are many reasons, even that first little thing by Ophelia, there are many reasons why that feels beautiful, the, the flute, all that stuff, but the harmony is really a big part of it. Like with, with the chord I just heard, I went, oh, that's very wistful, you know? There are wistful proje- pro- progressions. It's pretty interesting that you're saying that because um, what Destiny was talking about yesterday is, is he was talking about how he was always so jealous of people who could do really good melodies. Mm. That was always what he wanted to do. But then mm. he's been, um, I think he called it comping. I don't know if you're yeah. familiar with Yeah, sure. Yeah. That he was actually doing that a lot and that he actually really started enjoying being able to do that well. Yeah. So I think to what extent, I mean, there's always like a grass is always greener, right? You, you just admire someone really... Uh, like a lot for what they were able to do right but then you find what you're good at and then you find enjoyment in just being really good at that and just right. yeah right because like, like you rely on other people to perform and other people rely on you right and it doesn't have to be like you're the you know you don't have to be the quarterback and <laughs> right and and the running back and the yeah exactly um for my some own... people that's necessary but not yeah depending on the situation you can get enough satisfaction out of your role and performing yes well and my only fear would be that if a, a, a drummer were to hear any of these uh, episodes of the show I'm hoping to one day do, they might go, oh man, that's that's not why that song feels that way. It's because of the rhythm or it's because of the lyrics. To which I would respond, yeah, it all, it all is part of it. But I think the most mysterious part of a, any song is the harmony. Because I think the melody is kind of a story through line that most people get into. And then um, the rhythm is something people dance to and they totally get the rhythm. Uh, but harmony is this great, beautiful mystery, and I'd like to make it less mysterious to people, because I think there's value in knowing what I'm eating, knowing what I'm digesting. Imagine if, when you ate pancakes, you didn't know they were pancakes or how to make them. You're just like, oh, I don't know, these flavors are hitting my brain. You'd be, it'd be a different experience, and most people experience music that way. They're like, I don't know why I like it, but I, I do. When you're saying harmonies, you don't necessarily mean like just notes that like go together right but just like the whole correct the whole correct. product like working basically. Ex- exactly the whole the whole um the combination of all the pitches working together yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so and that could be um a beautiful sounding harmony of ba 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 it could also be a tough sounding harmony of bum 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 ba that's a minor six chord in an inversion it's a very mm-hmm. tough might be the wrong word but it's beautiful in a different way Oh, an inversion is which note is the lowest note being heard. So if I, um, an, an, a food analogy would be this. If I were to, to um, ma- oh shoot, if I were to make uh, pancakes again, but instead of putting them, I mean, that's a bad analogy. If I started with the eggs, my pancakes would taste different than if I started with the flour. It's still the same item, but the way I combine them in, in which order changes how I, T- I taste the thing. Another, I think there's another food item that has the same ingredients of a pancake, like a cupcake has similar ingredients, but the way I combine it is what makes it a cupcake. So, to make it more literal, um, if I have a D minor triad, it's D F A. I don't have perfect pitch, so those might not be the correct notes, but it's one three five. 
if I have that, um, and then the five is the lowest note being heard. We are now in second inversion. Yeah, yeah. So I have a A is, you know, in, in this example is the lowest note versus D. Oh, shoot. Oh, this guy's going to get some points to me. Um, so, yeah, and there's some beautiful inversions you can get when you start having actual chords. So you have seventh chords, and you're going to have the, the major seventh in the bass. Oh, my God. It's like, this is my, this is my shit right here. Um, you say major sevens, I just think destiny because that's a yeah, shit. It, that's the shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love me some major sevens too. Sure. But I also love it. Once I finish this guy off, I'll show you a chord I really yeah. love that's super sure. advanced. Okay, there we go. Done. So yeah, for example, here's D minor. Okay, I was in the wrong key. Great. So let's see the tune. There we go. That's D minor. Here's D minor in first inversion. Here's D minor in second inversion. So all the same notes actually, but they feel very different. It's D F A, then it's F A D, then it's A D F. So anyway, um, that's the inversion concept. But chords that I'm into, I like movement like this. That's a major seven chord. Destin likes that. So there were a lot of things happening there. Some inversions, some uh, altered chords where you, you take a, a triad and then you alter it. So it, to put that into language context, if I were to say, um, uh, if I were to say, someone said, do you like this band? And I said, totally. That's one way of saying it. What if they said, uh, do you like this band? And I went, totally. <laughs> like I'm altering the way I'm saying it. And I'm still saying totally. I'm still saying... Totally, or totally, but altered is, it's very similar to, but it's, it's, it has the same movement. When you were doing that first part, were you, were you, it sounded like you had like one note that was like in the first part and then you kept one note the same, but you switched the other ones. And Correct. You, then you kind of like repeat that over and over again to make yeah. the transition like smoother, right? Correct. So I had A, A, E, A, C sharp, E. And the second time I went A, G, C sharp, E, F. I'm sorry, E sharp. So these two notes stayed the same. And these notes went like this. So these changed, but these stay the same. So that's why they don't get people don't get surprised, and that's why it works. Exactly, you're you're giving them something familiar enough that they go, I can get down with that, and then you can keep mm -hmm. extending it from there. I could also add instead of just doing this, I could add this note too. So I could go from this to this, and most people will still hear it as basically. <laughs> but I'm going, <laughs> you know, or I can go, that's really out there, or I can go, but these are all five chords to one. They're just altered in different ways. Um, mm. So yeah, it would be like, to go back to the food thing, here's pancakes with whipped cream on top. Here's pancakes with strawberries on top. Here's pancakes with pineapple and mango on top. They're all pancakes. Yeah. They all have A and C sharp in them, but they have different those, dressings. I think, was a pancake you dropped on the floor, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Th this is the one you eat upside down and you can do the five second rule. Is this is it dirty or can yeah. I still eat it? <laughs> <laughs> that's really dirty. And yeah. it's funny as too then it, no, throw it out. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But that that's sour. That went bad. Um, <laughs> but then there's also what's fun is not only do we have literal, you know, pitches with uh, with alterations, but then you also have context. So back in the day, in the in the Django Reinhardt era, the hot jazz era, this was the most common five chord. That. So they would go. It's a very very sour five chord because there's a tritone here yeah. and the tritone here. It and has so to, it has to go somewhere. It yes. can't exist by itself. Like yes. it's very shrill. Right. And it, and it really wants to resolve. 
<laughs> like that? Yeah. yeah, that's what, yeah, it wants to resolve. That's what I mean, yeah. Exactly. So, um, so, uh, but the cool thing is because that chord happens so much in that era, when I play this, people feel two things, I think. They feel, oh God, you better resolve that. But they also feel, <laughs> oh, that's kind of hot jazz, 1920s. Because this yeah. happens so much in that era. Whereas this type of chord happened a lot in grunge power chords. So not only are those pitches very simple and basic, they also come, uh, or rather they show up in a specific era so strongly that uh, we feel the openness of that last one and we feel the 90s. We feel the tension of that altered augmented add nine chord and we feel the 1920s. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, it's cool how music can do this for us, um, can put us in a, in, a, in a new era purely based on the type of alterations the chords are experiencing. Oh God, this guy's gonna be good. Freaking Shy Guy, dude. I hate playing against Shy Guy. Oh wow, he's actually not as good as I thought. Have you played Mario Tennis Aces at all, Skardor? I've played, um, I played Mario Tennis on the Nintendo 64 bit oh, and on the classic. GameCube. So this is like <laughs> a little bit ago. <laughs> yeah, and this is, this, this one they really went balls out. It is intense. It seems, it seems like you have too many special moves. Yeah, you know. seriously do. You seriously do. <laughs> you can spam them a bit too much. You can you can slow there time. There's nothing more. Fr yeah, there's like nothing more frustrating than getting your player, your opponent, like completely uh, out of position. Then they're like, oh, special uh, skill, and they're like, ah. I, yeah, exactly. It's like it's like with Mario on um, party. It's like I, you're winning the game, and then at the very end, yeah. suddenly they win. Come on. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, you can slow down time in this game. You can do a trick shot. You can do what's called a zone shot you can it's just there's too much but i've put in about 900 hours into this game because i have emotional problems clearly um and here we are <laughs> yeah man okay so the thing that i have is that sometimes i will hear songs or hear music mm -hmm. and i will make connections yeah and then usually i ask my chat and in the past when i had a small chat everyone's like what the hell are you talking about you know right. no one gets it but now there's like at least a few music guys in there and mm. they like every single time they're like, yep, I hear it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, there's definitely a connection. So I'm like, mm. okay, I have some kind of feeling for this stuff. Mm, and right. one thing, um, um, not to get into like K-pop, but it's like a Korean artist from like one of those song contests a long time ago. And you know, everything is like cookie cutter. Everyone's just doing the same stuff, uh, right. whatever. And there was one person, um, that basically like you have these judges who are like these these huge you know they have these empires built right these right. whole i don't know if you're familiar with the the korean music industry but they have like the 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 one guy with like the the spiky blonde hair mm. i don't know if you i'm not sure i know about him like, one of the like the biggest companies there and he's just like he hears the song and he's like just sitting there like crying to himself like i don't understand music anymore like after she just plays one song, hmm. um, but it's not on YouTube anymore. Man. I'm, I'm going to try to find it. But did, did he feel that way because the song was just so beautiful? Yeah, he just he he felt like he wasn't because the song was so good. He hmm. was like wondering what he had done all this time. Wow, <laughs> like didn't live up to that. And like the guy next to him is like, yeah, I wrote about like three thousand songs, but none of them were as good as this one. Wow, and I've been I've been like working my whole life towards a song that that makes me feel this and i haven't gotten it and here you are wow you and they're, they're they're just sitting there and the third guy goes like isn't this like the power of music you know to make mm. you sometimes feel silly or feel powerless or you know um mm. but it's no longer on youtube but i think it's on I'm, i'll try to find you a link because i saved it because every now and then i just want to listen to it cause mm. it's just, hey um, by the way someone in chat asked a great question i'm so sorry philippe i missed it you said is c3 mm -hmm. like middle c yeah, so, yes, first off, I think, yes, maybe it's C2, I don't know, but I want to answer your question about between bass clef and treble clef. So, Philippe, there is a there is a line, an invisible line between those two staves. The reason why is because back in the Gregorian chant days, the staff was not treble clef and bass clef. It was one large, what's called the grand staff, proper Gregorian staff. And so, people used to read music on an 11 line staff but it was so hard to read that they ended up splitting it into treble and bass so that's why the middle c is there i, th I find that kind of interesting oh nice you found it awesome i gotta hear this yeah oh i almost gave jeffy a point
you know, it's like poppy and not as valuable, you know, <laughs> it's lowest common denominator kind of stuff. Right. Some stuff. Oh, it's such a great song. Um, the, main so thing, the main thing they talk about is like how, like in the last part you heard it, like just like one note that she like hammers, right? Yeah. And it sounds like way louder than the other one. Right. And, and, and he's ba his whole thing is basically that he just felt like that one note just like hit him in the back of the head. Yeah. And he was just like knocked out for the whole song basically. Wow. So he was like in a, in a daze while he was experiencing it. Hmm. And I kind of, yeah, I, I kind of felt that as well in the beginning. It's just how it opens it immediately sets the mood for right like yeah it's gonna be bumpy it's gonna be emotional you know i also love that yeah this uh yeah that's great i like that movement Oh, I'm playing a game. Shoot. Drain sucks? Wow. There's a great player named Drain in this game. And this person's name is Drain Sucks. Oh, boy. Damn. High fighting words, dude. He's, he's really good. <laughs> that either means this person's an idiot or really good and going to destroy me. Because if they're better than Drain, they're going to kill me. Um, but yeah, that, that, that beautiful movement right there. I love that. I need. I want to hear that song again. Oh God. Oh geez, this guy's gonna destroy me. This is my first yeah, wait, hard game. Let me find you the the moment where it actually starts, so you don't skip the start. I'll find the um, nice start of the song. Oh, it's, it, they talk about how it's like a song about um about um oh God, it's like about a guy 
who usually comes home from work at the same time and his dog like walks to the train station and then walks him home hmm. so the guy the guy like dies but the oh, dog doesn't wow. know so he still goes to the train station and then oh. he waits there basically until the dog like eventually dies as well because he's just he just waits until his owner comes you know hmm. it's a powerful message jeez yeah and she said it, it's a, it's about like how sometimes we have we we're, we're allowed to like wait for someone to take us as we are we don't have to change right uh, i love it wow but also, you know they like ham it up for the <laughs> for the for the show of course right the dramatic I, music. I lost my all my legs in it <laughs> it's like okay wow we yeah. have to my have you seen that that key and peel skit they have a, a skit about that where he's like, "Hey man, my," <laughs> he's like, "I'm here for the dance competition." They go, "Oh, you know, you're not, you're not good, you're you're done." He's like, "But but my but I'm addicted to crack." <laughs> They're like, "No, no, stop." He's like, "But my family uh, left me when I was an infant." No, no, stop, sir, get out of here. And then eventually he somehow convinces them that his story's sobby enough yeah. that they're gonna actually let him through. Yeah, yeah. Right. Wow. You always know who is going to be like decent singer by how much time they right. spend before they start singing on the, on the right. background. Story. Exactly. Like, exactly. Oh, go in the top 10. Right. Yeah. Right. I love that. Yeah. So that part, yeah, that part of the whole stuff, of course, I'm pretty jaded on all of that. But, um, yeah. Same. I try to just, yeah, sometimes you find some gems. Oops. Um, and there was, of course, a, especially in like the Korean music industry is huge, right? So, yeah. There's a lot of um, like music variety shows and stuff there where of course a lot of it is just entertainment, but there's some really good stuff in there where they get like completely unknown singers to sing duets with like billion record selling artists and stuff. And it's right. sometimes it's crazy how they can sing at the exact same level. Right. Um, and I will say that's, cool. I think BTS is pretty great actually. I'm like, wow, they're, this is, the songs are so catchy. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, yeah. God, how do they do it? They, they really. Actually, that's uh, They actually did like some Maple Story promotions with the game that I. No way. The game is like huge in Korea, right? And wow. There was like two people in BTS, or at least one guy who just like plays it quite a lot, and they will just tweet it out, and it's like a side game that most people in Korea play, kind of like how League of Legends is like. Right. Side, or like Minecraft is like a huge side game for everyone here. Right. 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 Oh man, I love. I need to come into your stream more so I can learn more about Maple Story because I bet I'd get into it based on this multiple tiered class, you know, all that stuff. I, Octopath Traveler was my favorite game because I think there were only eight classes, but you could combine classes and I, something about it I just really loved. Oh, nice! He broke his racket. Sorry, I, I might actually be able to beat this guy. He's I, yeah, you can break a racket. You only get two rackets in the tournament, and I I broke one of his, so I think I have a chance here if I play my cards right. Oh God! Oh. Now it's really hard hits does it damage it or something yeah a special shot will break their racket or a zone shot so you have these three little bars three meters and if you oh, I see oh it. whoa okay. exactly and if you break those meters down oh come on yeah. please i might have a chance here oh yeah he's he, he's a little he's getting more predictable mm. nice i was thinking about the tennis so i'm just thinking of my my dad like waking up in the middle of the night to watch like the australian open oh right right and then you, you know frustrated players sometimes just smashing their record on the ground and right get immediately, right because it's a gentleman's sport right stuff. right i i will say i'm not liking what's happening in basketball recently i'm a huge basketball fan and uh you can't even celebrate a dunk anymore everyone's so freaking getting tech uh, technical fouls for just like getting passionate about a sporting event i mean if i was playing this game and all, with all the f-bombs i drop i would be removed from this game nintendo would remove me I get so yeah. angry when I play this game, um, but yeah, if you dude. Win, you're not winning. You, I mean, you get frustrated. I think that's. I, I really. Oh shit! That was a good shot. Dang, he's gonna beat me. Ah, drain I sucks. Really watch basketball because, um, well, it's huge in the U.S. It's not as huge here. Right. But the main thing is, my dad also used to play basketball when he was younger. So wow. You get like super. You get super frustrated at like. Um, the like the cupping of the ball during dribbling. Oh so yeah, like, double dribbling. Or... Back in his day, right? You would have to have your hand would have to be on top of the ball, right? Right. And if it's even on the side of the ball, you would get fouled. So, and 
And these days, it's like three quarters underneath the ball. I know, I know, I know. He would get super frustrated. And right. even if I didn't really care as much, I would get like <laughs> vicariously frustrated. Right. Just because of his reaction. It was like, yeah, They're really all incredible. carrying. It's so true. Uh, dude, this has yeah. been so fantastic getting to know you more, Skardor. I, I might do my improvised musicals now. And you can stick around if you want. It's probably late where you are, though. Um, yeah, I think it's... 2 30 a.m wow oh man you're a champ uh i really am grateful you came in i i just noticed now that you raided us i didn't even see that happen so sorry i just realized that thank you so much man and i hope we can do another talk and talk about music theory my, my question to you is would these sort of analogies and things be something you'd, like you'd be interested in hearing more about or is it just like too muso theory for me, it stays um, like it stays pretty on a uh, like at a distance, I guess. But as soon as you like grab up the instrument, and let me hear it. Mm. That gives me more, way more background to what you're talking about. Smart. Because if you say like six, four, two, diminished, whatever, like I, right. I, I that doesn't say anything to me. You're like, oh, like, cool, great, good, good to know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you mention that more while you're playing it, and then you mention it again, then I'll have something to connect it to. But the first time, I'll have to yeah. hear something to Smart. Get some kind of base examples must be involved man well i hope mm. we get to do this again and i look forward to popping into your streams and, and lurking and or chatting and uh thank you so much mm. for rating us and for wanting to talk about music yeah i would have done it more in the past but i just i, I thought you stopped streaming but then i realized i'm not following you so that's probably why i never <laughs> saw you stream on. yeah man I'm not streaming anymore like that guy should be oh thank you know. man a lot of times i see streams like yours and i think like this could as long as people like discover it, this could right. this should be like a, like a ten fifteen thousand viewer stream. Dude, but, like, thanks, man. Instead of like an eighty people stream, <laughs> if I'm lucky, that way, right? It's way right. more cozy, and um, some people definitely are more at ease in smaller communities, and you definitely play to those people. I see very right. approachable, very like, right. Um, some people don't lend themselves to wanting those huge streams. Of course, that's a different thing. Um, oh, I would love it, man. I, I appreciate you saying that. I mean, I, I've been in touch with Twitch music a little bit, but I'm hoping to get more in touch with them. Uh, I'm writing some new people over there. Cause I, I think what we have here is, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying it's good, but it, I think it is unique on the platform. And so I'm like, man, we should, we should make this big. How do, how do we get this bigger? This is like totally brain farty, but like yeah. the thing. That I, that it's huge like the dmca stuff is huge now right right so what if everyone on twitch at least for like their opening and stuff and for like the stream is starting soon whatever has a song that they made with you that they can use as a background song for like the stream is starting smart and it's like this is my song right i made this i own this song right and then you can just pick it with them you i mean they don't have to pay you you don't have to pay them like it's like a collab thing right but if they're they bleed off a little bit with people into stuff and they would be like oh you should do a song with this guy next and everyone's like hey this guy did a song and it's like really cool you should do it too and then it just right it's like with dr k is like oh someone just had a conversation it was a really good chat everyone was watching it it's right. like, oh you should talk next and then it just starts it starts doing its own but of course it's up to you like how far do you want to go and certain players will have different styles and you'll have to do some prep work on like hey what are like five songs you really like right you know as kind of reference for you so you don't have to start from zero because obviously you have so much background um it could be like a three week thing to make one song but if you want to do something in like i don't know like a two three hour session or something right you'd have to, you'd have to zo zoom in, zoom in pretty quickly on something right. um doable and then always yeah. make it reggae. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Just kidding. Or like the, the, the Moombaton stuff. Yeah, I do like... this stream where um, so people can still freely request songs on my stream. I still kind of do that, but I have like different audio tracks. So the hmm. copyrighted music doesn't go to my VOD. So it doesn't appear in VODs and in clips. So you kind of try to bypass it that way. Yeah. It's not 100% safe, but it's way safer at least. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I play this thing with my stream. Whenever some kind of Moombaton <laughs> song comes on and it's, and it's like um, Southern American as like Spanish lyrics, I always play with my chat. Let's guess how many views this song has, chat. <laughs> it's either, it's either like 50,000 or right. like 1.8 billion. Billion. <laughs> exactly. Some. Exactly. Yeah, this song is, is has infinite views. There's no it's in between. Great. I love the idea, though, of someone yeah. saying, yeah, I'm a big jazz guy. Oh, cool. You like jazz? Cool. Okay. It's like, that's not jazz. I'll, you can, I'll ask you what style you like, but I'm always going to make it reggae. <laughs> like, I'm super, I'm into ballad, rock ballads, rock ballad. Cool, cool. How about, how's that work? 
right? I'm like, no, this is not right. Oh yeah, my God. and you could, of course, on beforehand, you could like, you know, you could chat with them, be like, do you want to make it like comedic, uh, right? Or um, you know, or do you serious, want to get, like, super serious, right? Yeah. And then, um, or just play around, or make like do video game music, or do you just want to like jam and have people do requests or whatever? Like, it could be something else as well. But I think it'd be cool if at the end of like a session or two, someone has an actual song that you made together and they can be like that's my song and they can always play that and at least i love it i love it and i I would never strike anyone that's i mean there's this guy named harris heller who does a really great thing called stream beats he totally created a a thing for himself and i was thinking man i should be making once a week or once a month loops and then people can use those on their streams and it's like yeah i'm not gonna dmca use my loops play them as much as you want yeah, maybe um, put my name somewhere and then people click through they, they like it something like right that. exactly these are great ideas man I, I appreciate everything and i look forward to coming to your streams and talking more on here or on your stream wherever you want but thank yeah, you for sure. stopping by scardor yeah the the time zones might be a bit probably right but we'll, we'll, something we'll make it happen the, the if you want to listen to the song again i'm like where, great where it starts you don't have to sit through the babble again. The, right. And the, the dramatic buildup in the beginning. because it's My favorite much. part of the song is when they speak in Korean and I don't understand. No, okay. <laughs> like, I yeah. don't know what's Well, I think that's, in some way, that's like the strength because you don't really get distracted by the lyrics very much. Totally. You don't try to, like, understand what's really going on. You're more focused on, like, the, the emotion in the words. Right. And how the the how the, the words are being used and, and how it flows with the music. And a lot of people get, like, Oh no! It's it's another Korean song. It's K-pop, and they immediately like zone out. I'm like, you're losing so much at that moment. Yeah, yeah there's so much, and that's where the music theory comes in. Because yeah, the, the notes, the there's a bunch of stuff happening in that song that, you know, that happened. Well, actually, what cue I forget. She did a bunch of chord changes that are incredibly jazzy. Yeah, Na, 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 na. Yeah, it's a beautiful melody. Jeez, so I'll be listening to that again. I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna pop in and do an improvised musical. Scarter, I, I have get some rest, man, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for doing this. Best, best of luck with the uh, the musical, and uh, we'll chat later. Okay, Scarter, talk to you soon, man. Yep. All right, thanks. Bye. That was so fun, y'all. Look at that, making friends, dude. You guys, I hope we've shouted out Scarter. I. Was I got right into the game and talking to that wonderful chap. But man, seriously, you got to watch the streams. I lurk a lot. I lurk on Twitch more than I should because I find that when I chat and they see the purple thing, sometimes people think I'm trying to do something I'm not, you know? Like, why can't, like if I go to in, even to Destiny's stream and I say, hey, what's up, man? It's like, oh, Zane's here. And then they, they Destiny, look, Zane's here. I'm like, I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to have fun. Thank you, Scardor. You rock, man.